Guys, last week I made a video called 15 Things That Germans Don't Understand About Americans. Well, I've lived in Germany for a long time. I'm sort of an expert on this subject, I believe, and I would like to now make the opposite of that video, which is 15 things that Americans don't understand about Germans. Now, please keep in mind, I am not saying specifically that I don't understand these things, okay? There's gonna be some stuff on this list that I, I don't understand, and I will make that very clear, but there will be some stuff on this list that you know, maybe the typical American doesn't understand, or I didn't understand when I first came to Germany, and since living here, I sort of understand it more. So keep that in mind, these are not necessarily 15 things that NAUF doesn't understand about Germany, it's 15 things that Americans, for the most part, don't understand about Germany. Without further ado, let's get into the list. <laughs> one that I actually don't understand, and that is Germans unnecessarily changing movie and TV titles when they're translated into German. This is a kind of a funky one. Now, Feely from Germany has made a great video about this with really good examples of it, but basically, oftentimes there'll be a movie made in the American market that has an English title, right? And then they translate it to the German market, and oftentimes they'll dub the movie. And you'd think they'd change the title to something in German, which that makes sense when they do do that. But what is confusing is when they change the English title to another English title, that's just weirder. For example, the movie Taken. In English, it's called Taken because the girl gets taken. But in German, the movie is called 96 Hours. Why? Sometimes there are translations that make sense because certain words would have double meanings and they don't uh, make sense in the other culture. But there are some examples like that just don't make any sense and it feels that they are unnecessarily changing titles in a comically goofy, silly way. And I don't understand that. That's one that I don't understand still. absolutely shocked me when I first came here and I actually made a video about this that was one of my first videos to get a lot of views and that is the three path or three track school system where students are separated at like age 11 or 12 into three different paths or tracks uh, based on their ability. So you've got the highest track gymnasium and these are sort of students who are on pace to go to university. You've got the real Schule, which is sort of the middle track and then you've got the hop Schule, which is the lower track. Now this is something that uh, is quite startling for Americans to hear that you separate kids at such a young age and basically determine their path in life from that young age. Um, so I was pretty shocked about that at first, but then you learn more about it. Um, there is ability to move in between the tracks so you're not locked into it permanently um, and stuff like this. And so I, there's also another benefit to it, in my opinion, is that it's you know, creates and encourages people to go into very important jobs uh, and trades, you know, whether that be carpentry, electrician, plumbing, things that are super valuable and important to society that uh, there's often a shortage of workers for. We certainly deal with this in the United States because everyone is encouraged, oh, you have to go to university to be successful and have a good life. And now there's a uh, sort of a, a dilution of the university degrees. Everybody's got a college degree. They've almost become worthless now. Um, and so I find that the three path school system does have some benefits, but for Americans first hearing about it, it is a shocking thing and seems pretty harsh. Now this one, the privacy paradox. This one I still struggle to understand a little bit. So it sort of has two components. Nudity. Germans are totally comfortable being nude, not necessarily in public, but yeah, kind of in public, whether it's at a, you know, nude beaches or specifically in the sauna. No problem with just full-fledged nudity, something that in America is a much more private thing. Okay, so you've got this sort of, um, freedom feeling with what Americans deem as a, a private aspect of your life. You've got that, but then Germans are so protective of their privacy in other aspects of life, such as online stuff. For example, you know, Google Maps doesn't have street view here for the most part because people are so concerned about their privacy. So what, this is what I'm calling the German privacy paradox. Some aspects of life, Germans have 
no desire for privacy when it comes to like nudity or PDA. But then on the other end of the spectrum, when it comes to online privacy, they have a extreme desire to be incredibly private. So this privacy paradox is something that I think Americans have a hard time wrapping their mind around because it sort of contradicts itself. It's like, are you fully desiring privacy in life or are you not? I'm not gonna say I fully don't understand it, but there's parts of it that I don't understand. <laughs> interesting to me. Um, it is basically what Germans deem to be cool style cars. Now in Germany you will often see people driving cars that have this hatchback look. Okay it looks like this the hatchback. <laughs> Whereas in the States more people are those are less common and you'll see more either like SUV types or sedan type cars. The hatchback in my opinion and I think a lot of Americans' opinions when I talk to Americans. Uh, the hatchback is not cool. It's kind of dorky looking, uh, it's funky looking, it's it just seems kind of, I don't know, out of place and ugly. And I've always thought this, when I first came to Germany, I'd see a lot of the young guys when they you know got a job and they started getting paid and they're able to get their own car, they choose to get a car like this, this weird hatchback looking car. like. No young American guy would ever pick this type of car, but it is so prevalent among uh, Germans. And it's just interesting to me that this is actually looked upon as sort of a cooler style. When I, I'm walking in the city yesterday and I look in the parking lot and I see just a row of cars and all of them have hatchback backs. And I still, you know, I've gotten more used to them, but I still think they're kind of dorky and not cool looking. Uh, whereas here in Germany, uh, people seem to find them very appealing. A lot of Americans struggle with this, and that is that everything is closed on Sundays. Of course, if you've watched my channel or any American in Germany's channel for a while, you'll know that this is always a shocking thing for Americans. We are so used to being able to get whatever we want, whenever we want. The convenience of basically 24-hour shopping ability is something that a lot of Americans are used to. So uh, Americans oftentimes have a hard time understanding this things are closed on Sunday's culture. But this is something that I actually totally understand now. I have come to like, and it has helped me. You know, you've got to schedule your week around everything being closed on Sunday, and then when Sunday comes, it's a day of rest and relaxation. But for a lot of Americans, I just don't understand. <laughs> Debit and credit cards, electronic payments. Germany, for a country so technologically advanced, is quite afraid of paying electronically. And cash payments are very prevalent here. I believe a lot more common here than in most other countries in Europe and certainly in the United States. This one, you know, I sort of understand it, but I also sort of don't. Um, I guess what I do understand is that Germans really value privacy and um, electronic card payments are always traceable, whereas cash payments are untraceable transactions. So you, you get that with paying for cash, but it is oftentimes so inconvenient. Um, and while I have gotten used to it, it is certainly a thing that Americans just don't understand about Germans. What are you so afraid of cards for? Just pull it out, swipe it, good to go. one gets me going and I and I try I try so hard to understand it physical distance awareness uh, in Germany is just brutal for Americans it is difficult for us to understand we are used to a certain level of a personal space bubble and like I said in previous videos nowhere is this more prevalent than in a grocery store where people will just act as if you don't exist if you're standing looking at a shelf you know one foot away from the shelf, people will come and just move in and stand right in front of you or reach right in front of you without saying, excuse me. They'll even physically touch you. It is alarming. It is shocking. Uh, we've got scientists around the world working to figure out what the deal is here, but this is something that most Americans do not understand about Germany and uh, actually me living here for a long time, I still don't understand it. <sighs> Gets me going. 
feeling uncomfortable with the German flag and flying the flag. Now, Americans love to fly the American flag. You see it everywhere. A lot of people have them in front of their houses. It is made into merchandise like t-shirts and phone cases and stuff, and this is totally common. Uh, whereas in Germany, it is much rarer to see the German flag. You'll see it around World Cup soccer time, but other than that, it's uh, quite infrequent that you see it. So much so to the point where a few weeks ago when Mikey, my brother, saw a German flag being flown, he was startled. He was like, oh, that's the first time I've seen a German flag here. Uh, and this makes sense, especially when you think about the history. Uh, there is a very cautious approach to sort of German pride. Um, and I would say that Germans are not sort of uh, flag-waving, chest-thumping, proud of their country. Their, their, their pride is displayed in different ways, and this is something that I've learned, that Germans are proud to not be proud, essentially, is a saying that I hear a lot of times uh, about Germans. And they show love and pride for their country with other ways, such as paying into the, the tax system, which helps benefit people with health care and education and stuff like that. This is what I've been told uh, of how Germans show pride. But it is certainly not done with waving the German flag. And this is something that I have come to fully understand about Germany. But for most Americans, it's uh, something you've got to learn. Water is not free, guys. In the States, anytime you go to a restaurant, you can always ask for a water cup and they'll give you free water uh, and you can basically get free water anywhere. Whereas in Germany, if you go to a restaurant, you buy a glass of water, it's going to be three fifty. dollars It's going to be oftentimes more expensive than getting a beer, which is quite frustrating if you're trying to you know, be healthy and just drink water. It's more expensive. I don't know if I understand this. I don't know if I understand this. I guess you can get tap water if you ask specifically, hey, please give me tap water. Um, but if you ask for a water in general, they're gonna give you something that you have to pay for. And Americans need to be told this. I had to tell my brother this a couple times when we were at restaurants and he ordered a water and I had to say, hey, you have to pay for that. And he was like, oh, no, I don't want that then. And so he ordered something else or didn't order a drink. This is something that uh, Americans need to learn and at first do not understand about Germany. You have to pay to use the bathroom. Public bathrooms are, for the most part, not free. And you have to pay anywhere from 50 cents to a euro to use them. In America, all public bathrooms are free. I've never seen a bathroom that you have to pay for in the States. I think there would be an outrage if you saw this. Uh, and when Americans come to Germany, they are shocked at this fact. But the plus side is, this is typically, this money is used to pay someone to clean the bathroom. So more often than not, these public bathrooms that you are using are much cleaner and more hygienic and less of a disgusting mess when you walk into them. And whether that's worth 50 cents or a euro to you, you must decide that. For the most part for me, I think 50 cents to 75 cents for a clean bathroom that I'm not disgusted by, uh, it, it's worth it probably. But certainly something that when they first come here, Americans do not understand about Germans. Americans hate to walk. Germans love to walk. Since I've come to Germany, walking has become one of my favorite activities. I go on walks certainly every day, sometimes two or three times a day. It is so refreshing, it, it just clears the mind, it helps me get creative ideas to make videos and all of my creative work. Uh, it's good casual exercise, you get to enjoy the nature and, and scenery around you. I'm a freaking huge fan of walking, but Americans, it's not a walking culture, we're car culture. And so when Americans come over here, they're always surprised at, you know, Germans going on walks for leisure or recreation, but also being willing to walk distances to get to destinations. Uh, that's something that Americans have a much smaller threshold of uh, what is an acceptable distance to walk to get to a destination. Uh, I see this a lot with my brother. Now that I've been in Germany for a while, my I am much more willing to walk to places, whereas my brother is shocked at some of these uh, walking proposals that I make. Let's drive, man. Guys, you've heard me complain about this for years. And, you know, I've tried to understand it and tried to see it from a different perspective. And I am not budging. It is so stupid and inconvenient that the traffic lights 
are put on the near side of the intersection. I hate it. I run into issues with it very often. I find it to be dumb and inconvenient, and I don't think anything is going to change my mind at this point. I've seen all the arguments. You are unable to take in your surroundings. You're up here cranking your neck, either looking straight up or looking off to the side. You're not able to take in the whole surrounding of the intersection. I am standing my ground on this traffic light situation. I don't understand it, and I know my fellow Americans do not understand this issue. <laughs> This is a big one, guys. Every American comments on this when they come to Germany. It's the staring. Germany is a country that loves to stare. Every American that I've talked to that has come to Germany has experienced this in one way or another. I have been in some incredibly uncomfortable situations with people staring, uh, specifically in my first couple years before I got more used to it and I kind of understood it a little bit more. I'm not saying I totally understand it. I, I still am pretty, like, confused by it oftentimes, uh, but I will say I believe in American culture staring at somebody is always a hostile act, especially if you like continually stare and you don't look away. This is like, hey, what's up? Like, you, you want to do something about this? That's how Americans interpret staring. Whereas in Germany, oftentimes staring is more of a, a curious stare. It's not a, a threatening, threatening stare. Um, and so that's sort of how I've had to look at it in my mind. Uh, and it's become less of an issue for me. Still an issue, still an issue, still happens. Less for me, but something that Americans, especially when they first come to Germany, do not understand. Explicit language in everyday life. Now, we're mostly talking about explicit English language. Uh, when I see this on, like, say, for example, uh, a dad will be wearing a shirt uh, walking around the park with his family, and the shirt says, like, something like, don't f with me, uh, or something along these lines, where just the F word is used in the design of the shirt, uh, and it's no big deal. Also, say, for example, at Unicorn's Youth Games, uh, we'll be there and somebody will be DJing, you know, kind of creating the vibe of in-between plays and having music played and stuff just so it's a good environment. And we'll be playing, you know, some Eminem song that is just very, very explicit and I don't think very appropriate for, you know, 10-year-old kid football game. Uh, but then there's families all around and we're playing some song, the DJ's playing some song uh, of early 2000s Eminem that is uh, heavy in the profanity and the explicit content and it seems to be no big deal. This is, I mean, this makes sense. English is a second language here, you know, so the curse words and explicit language don't have as much of an impact on you if it is not your native language. I see this often with shirts and clothing where, you know, fuck or sh or something is imprinted on the shirt as part of the design uh, and it's, I don't know, it's just kind of weird to me. Cigarettes, guys! Of course, cigarettes! Um, this is something that every American sort of is shocked by when they come to Germany is the amount of smoking and where smoking, like you smell cigarette smoke basically all the time. Um, I remember I was actually at dinner with my mom uh, in Birch's Garden and we were sitting outside and somebody was smoking next to us. And I had been in Germany for a few years at this point and I had gotten so used to the cigarette smell and cigarette smoke just being around all the time that it didn't really even phase me. But my mom was like, oh my gosh, I can't, they're like smoking right here and like blowing it basically in our face. And I was like, oh yeah, that is... That is kind of wild. Uh, and this is a an experience that many Americans have when they come to Germany. Cigarettes just seem to be much more common and prevalent here. Something, I, I don't know, I don't know why. Don't really understand it. All right, guys, so those are 15 things that Americans don't understand about Germans and Germany. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the list. If you've got anything else that Americans don't understand about Germans, please feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you next time.